what you see here is again the same situation. I have a Dr. Pepper can outside the range that we can see. But if I shine a light on it, I can see where the focal point is and actually see the focal point. We go a little beyond the focal point and there's my image of the Dr. Pepper can. Uh, you probably can't read it, but I can read some of the letters on the Dr. Pepper can right here. And if I had a very bright light on this, good illumination, I could get a very clear image. Now, this image is as if it's right there. It's as if the Dr. Pepper can is right there. Notice that the Dr. Pepper can is a good bit smaller. I didn't mention that the last time we formed an image, but the further we get the Dr. Pepper can away from the uh, lens on this side, the smaller the image gets here. And we'll easily see why that happens. Now I'm moving another lens in here. Now, this lens is fooled. It thinks that the Dr. Pepper can is right here. If I now move the screen back here, there will be a point at which the Dr. Pepper can image appears. Now that image is going to be bigger. I, I don't know if you can see the light on here. It's not really forming a very good image because we just don't have enough illumination. Actually, there's a pretty good illumination. But in fact, the image is going to form pretty far away. This is because the Dr. Pepper can is now very close to this lens. Matter of fact, I think it's too close. As a matter of fact, I think we're inside the focal length, but that's okay. Dr. Pepper can is close to this lens, or at least this lens thinks the Dr. Pepper can is close because of the image formed by this lens. So this image treats the Dr. Pepper can as if it was this big and at this point, and it'll form an image on the screen accordingly. It's one of your main principles of lenses. The image formed by this lens becomes the object for this lens.